YouTube, how are you now? Sean back here from the EDC Den. Welcome back one and all to the channel. Guys, I am in a buck mood today and that is a good thing. We're going to check out a couple of buck knives here. Uh, just quickly, we're flanked on the left by the Buck 112 Ranger. And on the right, this is the Buck 110, that is the Alaskan Guide version. But today we will be focusing on this Buck Vantage Pro. Let's check it out. So here's the knife. We've got these handles in, they call GFN, and that stands for good frickin' nylon. Ah, sorry guys, I forget what the GFN stands for. I know FRN, right? Fiberglass Reinforced Nylon, so something like that. And this is in a nice little camo pattern. It's got kind of a badge that's in set that's just kind of a, a stamping almost. There's no no shield or badge, but it's just kind of stamped into those GFN handles. We have an opening hole on the blade. We have a flipper tab on the blade with some jimping. We have steel liners and a steel backspacer. It's all stonewashed and it's got some, not exactly file work, but it's got some machining there, some jimping. Here we get to the back. We've got a nice deep carry pocket clip, fully deep carry that's gonna fully submerge in your pocket. Also a nice stone wash on this with a really nice stamp of the Buck logo with the anvil. I guess that would be reversible, right? Yeah, you can just turn that over to the other side if you like. So this is an older buck knife. I mean, not older, it's of the modern era, I guess you would say, but as far as flippers go, this was kind of earlier on in the flipper game and certainly new for buck. It flips by just kind of, you know, you work the pressure of the flipper against the detent. Once you break the detent, it's gonna fly open. However, it does not fly open. It's a kind of slow, weak flipper and you have to give it some wrist. It's absolutely a one-hand opening knife whether you use the opening hole with your thumb or the flipper, but you do have to give it some wrists to open the knife, like so. So just a light flick of the wrist at the right time will pop the blade open. Gravity definitely helps if you're just standing with your arms at your side and you would have the blade pointing down, then you just activate the flipper and gravity will get the blade down there. Whereas if you're holding the knife straight up and you have to overcome the gravity, it's just not going to be enough. So you've got gravity working for you, no problem. If not, you're going to have to give it just a little bit of wrist. Not a big deal. Or you can open it with the opening hole. Also a nice smooth opening with that opening hole. The more modern flipper knives of today would have no problem overcoming the gravity like that. I'll show you a, a zero tolerance knife here. Same position, holding it straight up, but when this one breaks the detent, it still flies right open. This one has bearings in the pivot. So don't expect this knife to be the, the flippiest flipper of the bunch, but uh, it does work just fine as a one hand opener. Let's take a look at the blade now. Got the Buck logo. And on the back, we've got the logo for the Paul Boss Heat Treat S30V steel with a nice stone wash. Good sharp edge, nice tip. Got a liner lock. There's no stick or anything there. It does operate nicely, nice and smooth. Buck describes this as a hard use knife, a hard use EDC knife. I think they would have had this probably trying to steal some of the market from Spyderco's Paramilitary 2 or Benchmade's Griptilian. This one would be less expensive, but still, you know, they are indicating that it's a hard use EDC knife. Here's the Spyderco Paramilitary 2, just for size comparison. These are both in the same steel S30V. 
don't believe this version is still available with the camo handles. I'm not sure if the current version of the Buck Vantage Pro has the stone washed little details on the pocket clip in the backspacer and the blade. I do like that feature of this one. It does look nice. So yeah, I don't believe this model is available anymore. You can maybe find some older ones. Um, there's definitely a current Buck Vantage Pro, so you'll get the same knife with the same steel, but you'll get a different handle. And I'm not sure if they're still doing the stone wash features. It's a comfortable knife in the hand. Definitely a full four finger grip. You've got the flipper tab acting as a choil with some jimping there. Kind of a bit of a guard. couple little hot spots but overall this is a really comfortable handle just feel the pocket clip just a little bit at the tip overall definitely comfortable not a whole lot of jimping here but it does work it does stop my thumb from sliding up so that's that's good jimping in my opinion you don't need a whole lot Good blade shape for every day. Food prep, small chores, outdoor tasks. Yeah, I think this does make a really good EDC knife. Weighs about three and a half ounces. Really nice pocket clip. It slides into the pocket really well. The handles are, are smooth enough to not impede it from going into your pocket and then once once it's in, it's absolutely buried, and you just have this not too reflective, kind of low key, nice looking clip sticking out of your, your pocket. All in all, it's a nice little knife that, you know, may not have the fidget factor that the Benchmade Griptilians have. Likewise with the Spyderco Paramilitary 2s, those are nice to handle and play with. This is more just kind of a get the job done knife. Um, again, it's billed as a hardcore, I think they said on the website, but let's call it hard use uh, folder. I think it is that. It's not the most hard use folder out of them all, but it's a good sturdy EDC knife at the end of the day. It's gonna get the job done. You can get the non-pro versions. It's, I think it's just called the Buck Vantage, and that is probably half the price, a uh, different steel, but still a really well put together EDC knife with the flipper tab and the opening hole with the same design on the pocket clip, which rides really nice in the pocket. So they do have a few options for you in this platform. All right, guys, I won't keep you too long with this one. I will just show those who are interested a little size comparison between the Ranger and the Buck 110 here since we have them. So let's get those laid out. Again, this one being the Alaskan Guide version, that is the Rosewood Handles. Uh, that's an S30V blade with some sort of coat on it as well as the logo there's the Paul Boss heat treat logo again with the S30V steel and the Buck 112 Ranger this one has the ebony wood handles those look really good too and what a comfortable knife this is I think the Buck 112 was just meant for my hand size. I've got kind of medium average size hands and it just melts right in there. That is a great one guys. I'd recommend all three of these knives really. When I think buck I do think of the 112 and the 110 so that's what I go for when I feel like carrying a buck. I don't pay much attention to their modern lineup. Again like I said this is maybe eight or ten years old at this point. Um, they're probably not the knife maker that I look to for modern folders at this point, but you know, the 110 and the 112 are just absolute classics. I still would recommend the Vantage Pro. I think the they have a pretty decent price point and it competes well with some other modern folders that can tackle the heavier duty jobs. Um, so a good knife, but like I said, when I think of a buck, I'm normally going for the 110 or the 112. Okay, guys, that is it for today. Have a great day, everyone. We will see you real soon in the next video. Take care, everybody.